By now, you've probably heard terms like AI assistants, AI agents, and maybe even RAG. But what do these terms actually mean and why should you care? In this video, I'm going to break these terms down in a super simple way. So regardless of your background, you'll walk away with a clear understanding of what these terms mean and how they work. We'll start with AI assistance because that's probably the easiest one to explain. And then we'll jump into AI agents and that's where things get super exciting. Not only will I explain what AI agents are, I'm actually going to visually show you using this really cool platform called NADN. So that way you can see an AI agent work in real life. I built my own Jarvis style personal assistant AI agent that I'm going to walk you through. So that way you can see how cool it is and how amazing AI agents can be if you give it the right set of tools. I'm super excited for this, so make sure you stick around till the end, because by the end of this video, you will hopefully have a clear understanding of all these terms, so that way you don't get confused when you see news about AI agents, AI assistants, or even RAG. So let's start with AI assistants. So AI assistants are like digital helpers. They're there to make your life a lot easier. You ask it a question, it provides an answer. It's not capable of acting on their own. It's just there to make the repetitive tasks a lot easier. So one of the most common example of an AI assistant is the Siri, which comes native to Apple devices. I'm sure we have interacted with Siri at some point in the past several years. You could think of Siri as a perfect example of what an AI assistant is. It's not capable of doing independent or autonomous work. You give it an instruction, it's giving you back a response. They're not completely independent, but they're great at supporting you in real time. In the past several years, ChatGPT has also hit the market and has taken the world by storm. So ChatGPT is also a form of an AI assistant. It has a really cool user interface. It's a bit smarter and more robust than a Siri, for example, because of the fact that it has pre-trained data and you can interact it with it in a natural way. It can respond to you. It can provide you answers to common problems or maybe even solutions to the problems that you might be facing. However, the problem is these AI assistants are reactive, meaning it requires user input all the time. So we would have to go back and forth and provide step-by-step -step instructions in order for it to achieve some tasks. AI agents, on the other hand, are completely autonomous. So that's where the magic of AI actually comes in. So now let's dig into the AI agents. This is where the future is heading. If you have paid attention to any news from tech companies, majority of tech companies are predicting that AI is going to shift towards AI agents where the real power of AI will be unleashed. So simply put, AI agents can handle tasks autonomously and are capable of making decisions independently with the tools that they have access to. All right, so let's jump into this platform called NADN. Again, NADN is a open source platform. It's capable of handling a lot of integration with different apps. And in this particular platform, I built this amazing personal assistant AI agent Jarvis from Iron Man that's capable of actually making a decision independently with all the tools that it has access to. If you're interested in seeing this entire demo, I've created a separate video on Jarvis where I actually showcase all of the steps step by step. So that way you can see how I built this thing. And then also you will have a full version of this on that video that I'm going to put in the description. So make sure you check it out. But anyways, so the way this AI agent works is the user. So it would be either me or you. Uh, will interact with this AI agent via a Telegram bot. Now, a Telegram bot could be replaced with a cell phone, so you can interact with this with the voice from your text or through your phone. Telegram is just an app that I'm using from my phone. It could be accessed from the computer as well. So the way this works is this AI agent is waiting for a trigger, meaning it's waiting for some kind of a message or some kind of instruction that's coming in from user. And then based on that instruction, it's capable of understanding that instruction and it has access to all these tools. So for example, its brain is the open AI chat model. Again, this is just the chat GPT, but from a API perspective, but this is basically the brain of this AI agent. So every time it has to perform a task, it utilizes the open AI chat model to be able to understand and make sure it completes those tasks with a logical step. And the way it does this is if we go inside this tools agent, we have given this a system message or a system prompt. And what this is, is a set of instruction that we're telling this AI agent that, hey, this is how you will behave. You have access to these different tools, like for example, an email management, 
calendar management, task management, web and information queries. And as you can see, I have clearly provided all the guidelines for this agent to make sure that it's capable of understanding whatever the task is being given to it by the user and then has access to all these tools. So for example, it has the Gmail tool to access my emails. It has the calendar, the Google calendar tool to be able to perform tasks from my calendar. It has contacts, tasks, and all these things. This is a database, uh, what's referred to as Airtable. It could be replaced with a Google Sheet or some other uh, database as well. SERP API is basically Google, so it can uh, grab information that's real time. Hacker News is just giving it more, again, real time information. And Calculator is something that it will give it the ability to perform some kind of a, a numerical calculation or numerical or mathematical operation. All right, so, and then it also has this thing called buffer memory. So the memory is basically giving this AI agent the ability to remember the past interaction. So that way it can have a more natural conversation and it can go back and forth with the user in a very natural way. And then also, I'm also giving it another tool where in this message, system message, I explained to this AI agent that you are Jarvis, a sophisticated, quick-witted AI assistant from Iron Man. So I'm giving it a persona, right? And that's where the power of these AI agents come, where now we can ask it to behave a certain way simply by giving it a natural language instruction. And in order to make sure that it understands my structures properly, I've also given it several examples on how to behave because I want to make sure I'm reducing any edge cases or I'm reducing any kind of behavior that I don't want it to do. So that's where, again, these AI agents become more and more powerful, the more tools you provide to this. And it also has a text to speech. Again, this is just me giving this AI agent the ability to speak back to me in Jarvis's voice. So that's what that essentially is. And again, I'm going to put the link in the description of this particular video so that way you can check it out because it's very cool. It acts exactly like Jarvis from Iron Man. So make sure you check that video out. So just a quick recap, uh, when a user sends it a text or a voice message, it's capable of understanding that message, that instruction, and then it has access to all these tools with the brain that it has right here to independently make a decision on which tool to use for whatever the instruction it's being given. And that's where the huge difference between AI agents and AI assistants come in. So that hopefully gave you an overall understanding of how AI agent works and how it's different from an AI assistant. Now, a bit more technical, the next is RAGS, which stands for Retrieval Augmented Generation. So simply put, RAG is a way to make AI smarter by giving it more data and training it on more specific tasks. So for example, in this particular um, example that I'm showing right here, I'm uploading files from a Google Drive to a Pinecone vector database. So a vector database basically converts the data, whether it's a text document or an image or a video file into vectors, which are basically numerical representations of that data, it stores it in this database, and then we're able to interact with this data and get accurate information. So the big difference between a RAG versus a normal AI is, for example, a ChatGPT, is that ChatGPT or a Claude, uh, they have been pre-trained or set of data that has a specific cutoff date. So for example, a ChatGPT's last update would be that it got trained to data up to September 2024, and anything beyond that it has no knowledge of because that's where the cutoff date of its training is. So for example, if you want to ask AI about a particular event or a particular uh, law that recently got passed, it would have no clue. Therefore, RAG is a better way to make this AI more smart because you're giving it more relevant data. In our case, you can upload, for example, a legal document and you wanna make sure that you're able to interact with this in a natural way where you can ask it questions and this AI will be able to retrieve the most relevant document in a way more accurate way compared to, for example, uh, if you were to utilize an existing traditional database, right? Because a traditional database uses query matching, meaning that whatever you're asking it, it's going to take a look at the words and try to match that into the database and retrieve that information. Most of the time that information is not as accurate because it might have information that's not relevant to you. But as long as there's some kind of a word matching, it will pull up that information. However, with a RAG, 
The reason why it's such a powerful way to interact with documents or data in general is because it understands the context behind the data when it stores it. So therefore, when you're interacting with it, it's able to provide you way better answers and way more accurate answers because of the fact that it uses these AI models to vectorize that, that data. Now, I don't want to keep this video too long. I have a lot more videos and tutorials on rags on AI agents on my channel. So make sure you check it out. And if you're serious about upgrading your skills and learning how to build AI agents, even if you have no coding background, make sure you join the school community that I've started. And again, it's a best way to get your skills updated because it's a community driven project where you are there with like minded individuals who are there to help you out. I'm going to put the link in the description. Hopefully I'll see you inside. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.